Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects. Today I'm going to show you this fun terracotta finish with two variations on the glaze. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So to get ready for the terracotta decorative finish, we need to base coat the surface. Base coating and priming are two different things. Priming we do on bare surfaces or uh, surfaces that have repairs that need to be primed to seal the surface in order to base coat over top of it. Base coating is not necessarily a primer and primers are not necessarily base coats. So say, that being said, I've base coated with the quartz primer. Now you can use any flat latex or flat acrylic or even a flat oil if you can still find it out there. But as long as it's flat, it will work the best. Uh, shiny surfaces, satin eggshell, low sheen, low lusters. The product doesn't, it sticks okay, but the problem is it slips and slides. So, rolled it on with a quarter inch nap roller. You can tint it with um, pigment, never paint. Pigment is highly concentrated colors. If you use paint, it's going to dilute the product, destroy the product. It will not work properly. What else? Cleans up with soap and water, interior and exterior. Our tools, texturing trial, our stainless steel texture trial, and uh, stainless steel spatula. It's a little dirty because I just whipped up the faux stone. Now the faux stone texture acrylic texturing medium. Interior, exterior, tints with pigment, never paint. Same thing as the base coat. Pigment's highly concentrated colorant. Paint will destroy the product, meaning it'll dilute it down. It'll make it soupy. It won't work. Interior, exterior, you can do just about anything with it. Spray it, brush it, roll it, trial it. Put it on with your hands, whatever makes you happy or whatever makes you do, whatever you can, hey, it's, it's up to you, be creative. I'm going to use a trial today. So what we're gonna do is take some of the faux stone, put it on our trial, and let's, now a bed coat, or a base coat, I, we'll call it a bed coat, I don't wanna confuse things with uh, the base coat of a, the base coat that we've used for a roller. This is our bed coat of plaster. This is what everything's gonna be built upon. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. The reason I'm doing it, simple. Um, the next step is gonna be, um, kind of a skip trial or sort of a skip trial irregularly placed technique so if I don't put a, a bed coat of plaster down when I go to do my glazing it's not going to take right it'll look funny so this way the glaze will kind of take properly to the bed coat and the texture coat and if I just try to go texture over prime base coat or the prime coat will base coat uh, it won't look the same. Doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Doesn't have to have a whole lot of interest or texture to it. It can have some, it's fine. And actually, we want some. You don't want it too crazy, though. You don't want to put it on too thick because it'll crack. We don't want that either. If we want it to crack, we'll make it crack using the right materials and techniques. So, put it on, move it around a little bit, and there we go. Let it dry 100%. We'll come back and get started with our texture coat. All right, so we're dry, so we're gonna take our stainless steel spat trowel and our spatula and our faux stone, and let's get it on here and create some texture. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. In the sense I, sometimes I'll pat it on there, sometimes I'll do all kinds of different stuff. Just depends on the texture I'm trying to create. That's the beauty of it. You can create all kinds of different textures. You can go real heavy and nasty, gnarly, grungy stuff. Nice, soft, smooth, undulating very rustic, you name it, the possibilities are endless. I'm actually gonna put it flat, kind of drag it, watch. See this? So what it's gonna do is grab some of the plaster and put it in some other areas. So it's gonna pull it from here and kind of put it in those exposed areas. And that's what I want. Whoops, that's way too much. What am I thinking? All right, almost. You can just do so much with these materials. I mean, I could leave it any which way I want at any time if I like it. But the idea, again, just pulling some stuff here, stuff there, clean off the excess.
Then we're gonna take our water bottle. Let's mist it, hydrate it. This will create a slip coat so we can take our rubber knockdown trial tool and float over top of it and create that very warm, worn look that we're going for. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. The water lets the tool slip right over the top and it doesn't leave a lot of scratch, doesn't leave any scratch marks as long as you have it wet. And see the way I drug that trowel over it, I'm getting these really interesting scratches in there. But we'll call them pits because they're not really a scratch. All right, so let's, that's it. Let's let this dry. We'll come back, throw some color on it. Okay, so our texture is dried for our terracotta finish. Now I'm going to put some color on there. And I'm, for coloring, I'm going to use our classic wall glaze. Classic wall glaze is kind of a common, uh, I don't want to say common, but it's the type of glaze you find in a lot of different places. They're not all created the same. This classic wall glaze will tint with paint, not pigment. Yes, I know, totally opposite of things I've already told you about different products. But here's why. Classic wall glaze does not have any drying agents in it. So if I take the glaze itself and put it on the surface, it never dries. It stays wet, soft, goopy, tacky over time, but it never truly dries. So if you put pigment in it and smear it, put it on the wall, it's just going to stay wet for God, weeks, months. Um, and in the workshops, I'll take and show people at the day one of the workshop, I take the classic wall glaze, I smear it right on the wall on my easel. I don't put anything in it, just clear glaze. By Friday, it's still wet. You can't believe it. So you tint it with paint because paint has a drying agent in it that makes it when the two come together and combine at the ratio of one quart of paint to one gallon of glaze. That's the proper ratio. Well, you can change a little bit once you're comfortable with it. But one quart of paint, gallon of glaze, that's the proper ratio. And then you put it on the surface, you'll get a half hour working time and about two to three hours dry time. So that's that. So what I've done is I have my, whoops, almost forgot. Let's hydrate it first with a little bit of water. Not a lot. What it does is now the hot plaster is hydrated. So when the glaze hits it, the glaze is gonna <laughs> ride on top of the water and not soak right into the plaster. So let's take some of this orange. Can't talk today. All right. That's just an orange tinted glaze, nothing fancy. Yeah, that's pretty good, let's see. All right, now let's take our red tinted glaze. It's more of a burnt red. I think this is Venetian red actually is the name of it. Oh, that brush is a little crunchy. It has been a while. So you see I'm kind of not deliberately overlapping them. Now, let's take our overly priced, highly exotic blending bags, or in this case, trash bags. That's right, trash can liners from the big box store, or use 0.7 mil. You want the thinnest plastic, pa -ha -ha. can't talk again. The thinnest possible plastic drop cloth you can get, which is like a 0.7 millimeter thick drop. No color, no ink, because if it hits this, it could release the ink and color back into our finish, all right? I'm kind of just blending back and forth. Tapping, tapping, tapping doesn't do anything. See that? Got to give it a little blend, but I don't want to overwork it and create a brand new messy color or a uniform color. Get it down into this crevices. Pull some off here. Kind of, I don't want to lose, I put more red on an orange. Got to, that's why practice, practice. Perfect practice is very important because you start to figure out how to blend this, how to blend that. Now I could always come back and change this with some, add a little water, soften it up. I want to make sure there's no cows, like spots, like on the cow. Let's take a rag, come in here. I'm just going to tap it, soften off, pull off some of that excess. So what I 
couple things. Let's let's slow down. Now, if you like all that, what you can do is just take your brush, soften it out. Okay? I do that all the time with a big wall brush. It's also known as a car wash brush. I just don't happen to have it here because I'm doing a couple rooms in my house right now. And I have a lot of the tools there. And if all goes well, I will show you those videos. I just, uh, videoing is kind of a new thing for me. Remember, I'm a painter, not a videographer, so you got to bear with me. All right, so there's one look. See that? Dark, rich. But we can, like I said, it can come up here with my rag, blot some of this off, and then I can come in here and soften this out. And the reason I'm softening it is because it's going to warm it up. All right. I just want to, I don't want to see the brush marks. I don't want to see too much of this. So look, there you have two options, okay? Darker, more, a richer look. Darker colors in a space is going to make the space smaller, confined. Lighter colors make the space feel larger. But the, I mean, it's that simple. You have two options, and I just really didn't do that much to either one. And it just depends on what you're doing. This is going to be a lot, a little bit brighter, more cheery. You know, perfect sunroom. God, that would just make so nice. But this is too, you know. There's, there's. The, go, 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 go. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? <laughs> go get yourself a terracotta pot down at the home and garden store. That's what it's going to look like. And after 10 years in the sun, that's what it's going to look like. All right. Play, experiment on sample boards. Don't go playing on your walls. It's too much work to make a mistake or you do it and all of a sudden it's like, I want to change that. I'm not happy with that. Oh, yeah, you don't want to do that. See all the plaster falling off as I peel this away? That'll come on to your, get onto your floors. <laughs> Ugh. So put your drop claws down. Don't make a mess. Because you make a mess, you got to clean the mess. Let's get this out of here. Of course, you don't want to come off. There you go. Light terracotta. Dark terracotta. Light, dark. Light, dark. Choices are yours. All right. The wet look will disappear once it dries. And uh, I actually do like to seal these with a dead flat varnish when I'm finished because it just adds a layer of protection and seals it. You can wipe the, once this glaze is dry after, well, 24 hours, it'll be totally dry. But the can's gonna tell you it'll be cured in 30 days. Read the back of a paint can, it says, it says the same thing. 21 to 30 days. Uh, if you're gonna ever clean it, don't use anything with ammonia in it. Ammonia-based cleaning products destroy painted surfaces glaze because the ammonia is harsh, right? So just use a non-ammonia-based cleaner and spray it on the rag and then wipe the wall. Not on the wall and then on the rag. There you have it, a fun terracotta finish with a slight, slight soft texture. I wanna thank you for watching. And I keep bumping this table and I apologize for making that camera wiggle. I won't do it again. Try not to. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor. Hit that little like button, subscribe button down there, with a like or thumbs up, and hit the subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.